podcast is brought to you by Gura Board in conjunction with the CFA Society of Seattle. Today's guest is Roy Henrik, past president of the CFA Society of Seattle and current judge on the Ethics Challenge. Hello, and welcome to this podcast. I'm your host, Kiora Boer. Today, we'll be talking to Roy Hamrick about the ethics challenge that the CFA Society of Seattle is organizing. If you're interested in the ethics challenge, please visit the CFA Society of Seattle website or look for the ethics challenge in the weekly email update. Welcome, Roy, and thank you for being with us here today. Since I'm one of the volunteers for the ethics challenge, in fact, I help organize it. I know that that you participate in that as well, and as a judge, in fact. But uh, before we go into that, could you maybe tell us a little bit more about yourself? Um, sure. Well, first, I'll just start off by introducing myself. Uh, I'm 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 Roy Hamrick, and I'm actually been a CFA charter holder, uh, although I'm fully retired now. I was awarded the CFA charter in 1988, and uh, so I have one of the lower numbers. Uh, I was only around 10,000 about the time that I got the charter. I think now it's well over 100,000 CFA charter holders worldwide. But um, I, I had my business was Hamrick Investment Council. Uh, investment advisory firm here in Seattle. And I started that uh, shortly full time in 1991, shortly after I was awarded the charter. Um, and I, I, I working independently. And then also I became involved with the CFA, what was then the uh, Seattle Society of Financial Analysts is now the CFA Society of Seattle. Um, and I was the president, spent four years on the board, five years, and then uh, in 2000. So it's been quite a while since uh, since I was a board member of the CFA Society. Um, but I, I, when Jura, when you offered the opportunity for me to uh, be a judge on your ethics challenge, I jumped at it. And that because uh, I agree with you that uh, the ethics is core to the um to being an investment professional. And it's been part of the CFA Institute since uh, really since the beginning. It really started shortly after the Second World War and uh, and then ongoing as they continue to ramp up the program and as the organization developed over the years. But ethics was always a key piece, I think, because it's always been a little dicey in the financial services industry where people are uh, not necessarily acting in the best interests of their clients um, or uh, in, in the best interest of society. So it's uh, I, I'm pleased, always personally wanting to be absolutely as professional as possible and ethics being a part of that, as well as the education piece of the CFA uh, study program and the professionalism and the standards. Um, so it's, uh, CFA has been a, a key part, was a key part for me in running my business. And I was delighted to be able to call myself a chartered financial analyst and to, uh, and to have ethics be a key part of my business. So. If ethics has been a part of the CFA uh, uh, charter for so long, do you uh, feel that, I mean, I, I certainly have come across moments in my career where I thought that uh, there were some ethical questions that, uh, that, uh, that, that had to be answered before, before we could move, uh, before we could move on. Do you think, or do you feel that that has uh, gotten b uh, better? With more and more people getting uh, getting the charter, as you said, you were one of the uh, the early ones, uh, uh, and and now I think there's indeed a hundred thousand or even more, uh, more charter holders. Do you feel that it has gotten better, or uh, did it even get uh, get worse, in your opinion? Well, I think what I see, Jura, is that uh, it seems to continue to be a problem. Whether it's worse or better, I can't say. But I'm just surprised that you're always hearing in the news about a Ponzi scheme or another kind of, and these are these are actually violations, fraudulent kinds of things, and and how uh, how much are people 
really adhering to ethical standards, just higher standards of professionalism and not cutting corners and really watching out for the interests of their clients. I think it's always an issue. And, uh, and it's, uh, we're in a such competitive financial in- environment that people are encouraged to try to focus on profit. And I think, um, ethics is what the A- CFA Institute used to say, the higher standard that where we go beyond just what, you know, legal, but to really to try to act in a, in a, in a higher ethical fashion to beyond the the letter of the law, but to really um, operate in the best interests of clients and, and society. One of the comments, uh, Jura, that I wanted to make in, in thinking about uh, the doing this podcast today and about the upcoming challenges, uh, I am a believer in the, in our capitalist system, but I'm very not very much familiar with the idea that capitalism it, it works in a moral and ethical framework, and that's critical uh, because if you don't have a strong moral and ethical framework, the capitalist system starts to fall apart and you get into a uh, really unhappy kind of social situation. So um, that I think that that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm so enthusiastic about it, because I think our capitalist system is, is an excellent one, but that it has to be done with guardrails to make sure that uh, that the abuses are kept under control. Absolutely, and that's also one of the reasons why we, uh, well, why we why we started the ethics challenge, to have students engage with ethical questions as soon as possible. I think Michael McMillan he explains it uh, explains it best when he says, well, you know, ethics is this slippery slope where not everyone is good or bad or starts out as good or uh, or bad, but you make a decision which is questionable, and then you have you're forced to make a second dis- uh, decision which is even more questionable, and that's when you get that 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 you slide down you slide down the the the, the scale, and before you know it, actually you have the SEC or uh, whoever knocking on your uh, knocking on your door. Yeah, by then it's uh it's it's really too late whereas if you start early thinking about ethical questions if you start early thinking about ethical questions you have time to well prepare a proper answer and also you're not you're not surprised when they uh, when they happen because ethical dilemmas are just well they're part of uh, they're part of life everything every action has consequences and uh, by thinking in advance, thinking ahead, being prepared, at least a little bit prepared, it uh, it, it 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 helps you to avoid that that first, well, possibly avoid that first that first uh, that first that first mistake. Yeah, and I think that's what I think is particularly the value of the ethics challenge is we're approaching students, people who are at the beginning or even not even yet in their careers. Um, to really get uh, younger people thinking about ethics, recognize the importance of it. And because uh, what we're really trying to do, both at the Securities and Exchange Commission, but also in the CFA Institute, to create a culture of ethical behavior. So where it's just, it just becomes part of the DNA as investment professionals that we're operating in that, in that fashion, always thinking about about the code and standards. Um, I know in my business, that was the first thing. Everybody, whether or not they're a charter holder or uh, all employees, the first thing would be hired new people was to say we are uh, to introduce them to the CFA Institute, the Code um, of Ethics and Standards Professional Practice, and that everyone in our firm was always held to that. So it's critical. Uh, that everybody that's day one that that's that's how we operate in our business exactly and uh, i think that's that's also the only way to do it but that's my that's my personal uh, that's my personal uh, opinion of course um now i've been organizing the ethics challenge for well this is going to be the third year and uh, you've been actually part of uh, of the team as uh, as well. I I'm the uh, the presenter, the host, and you are you are one of uh, you are one of the judges. What uh, and then you are of the returning judges as well. What do you what do you like about the ethics? Uh, what do you like about the ethics uh, ethics challenge? 
Um, as an investment, uh, former investment advisor, I, I it was it's pleasure for me to see uh, younger students, to be around uh, younger people uh, who are looking at developing careers and in investments, and to see the energy and enthusiasm, uh, and also insights, different way of looking at things that uh, they bring to the table. So I'm very much looking forward to being a judge again this year. It's been a pleasure in the past. And uh, to see them, they prepare, they take, put so much energy and enthusiasm into participating in the ethics challenge. Really, it's a lot of work uh, alongside the just normal studies. Um, so for me to be able to see bright young faces talking and stretching to uh, to take ethics seriously and to understand the code and standards, um, it's it's just a, it's been a ball doing this, and it, also with the other judges who are Ganner people, uh, charter holders who uh, who also understand the value of the, the importance of ethics in the profession. I couldn't I couldn't agree more. It's it's so much fun to see students. And what I find amazing is that these students, unlike many charter holders, they have a very limited amount of time to uh, work through the case study. But uh, typically, they have no uh, they've had no exposure to the code and standards whatsoever. So they have to go from uh, from zero to a hundred within well a couple of uh, a couple of weeks. We usually provide the case and then the code and standards about four weeks in advance. And in that time, they really have to, yeah, they have to work hard, as you, uh, as you, uh, as you say. And I can, um, I, uh, I can, I can only agree when you see their energy and when you listen to their insights. When we did it the first year, I was, and well, it probably says more about me than anyone else. I was uh, surprised by how deep they had thought about. Uh, about uh, about the case, I remember when I was a student. I'm not sure if I could have pulled off uh, what they uh, what they pulled off, and it's that it's it's an absolute joy to uh, to uh, to see. Now, in the past two years, uh, we uh, were given a case that was prepared by CFA Institute, and this year we had to write our own case. And uh, I'm very glad that. Uh, that you offered to uh, to uh, to write uh, this uh, uh, this this case, and I'm I'm very glad. I'm also very proud that uh, here in the Pacific Northwest we wrote our own case. But what inspired you for uh, for uh, for this particular case? And I know that you can't go into the exact uh, exact details, but uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about that. And I appreciate the question. Um, so last year, it, it was fun to participate in the ethics challenge. Uh, students did a great job. And the case study that was presented to them was based on the, on the Bernie Madoff uh, scandal. And uh, of course, that was a, a horrible um, thing that, that happened. Uh, but it was, it was clearly, Bernie Madoff was clearly a fraudulent kind of Ponzi scheme. And so I think it's it's important from an ethical standpoint to, to stay within the letter of the law and to not engage in fraudulent activities. But I think what I like about the CFA Institute and wasn't really created a challenge last year was more subtle issues where it's where where you can do things that are still legal, but are still uh, unethical that are inappropriate so it inspired me to try to create a case study that would uh go into more subtle areas where it isn't where people should act in a certain fashion because it's the right thing to do even though it's it, it, technically legally you know i think of the metaphor you can steal candy from a baby but should you um and in the investment profession there are things you can get away with but uh, it, but uh, should you, or more realistically, really uh, sh should should you not necessarily do that? And that's why I wanted to try to raise issues for students to think about of how do you act in a professional, um, ethical fashion uh, that goes beyond just staying within the law. So it's fun to write the case. I, uh, I um, hope we'll have a chance to continue to do this because 
uh, it, it's, it, I think we can continue to, um, to create interesting case study for students to tussle with, um, and to, as we go into the more new issues of technology and all the different kinds of professions, uh, there are within the investment industry, um, that to incorporate some of those into the uh, challenges we put out to students to think about. Absolutely. And I think the case that that you have written is actually a lot, well, more difficult is probably more interesting also for uh, for audience uh, audience members to uh, well to, to to listen to and to uh, well to and to take in. Because as you say, uh, it's not as black and white as the previous cases were. I think the previous cases that CV Institute presented, they were very much in line with, well, yeah, uh, very much in line with, uh, well, basically with the CFA exam itself. It felt like a little bit. Um it was a lot of there was a lot of recognition for for me. Whereas now, if when I read the case. And I won't go into any details, of course. Then I can see that there is much more, much more storytelling, much more, much more nuance. What I asked the students, or what I told the students to do, is try and focus. Well, not on everything. Uh, don't use a shotgun approach, but pick the important bits to you, and then elaborate on, uh, and then elaborate on that. Also to get. Well, to get really to get students to think about what uh, what that uh, what that means. So the ethics challenge, of course. Uh, well, I have a lot of help actually uh, by uh, well uh, uh, Al Gelso and uh, also by uh, Jean Chen, who helped me organize this uh, this thing. But uh, we couldn't do this without uh, without the students either. Uh, who do actually all the uh, the really uh, the really hard uh, the really hard work? I was impressed, Jara, that you got four four universities this year, which is more than we've had in the past. So, uh, an increasing number of of uh, university students in being involved in the ethics challenge, and also I, I just thought I would mention that. Part of it for me in my previous year I, I, years, I did also I was something of a playwright. So when I was given the opportunity to write a case study, this uh, gave me a chance to try to run write something that certainly touched base on all the ethical issues that are a part of the code and standards. But there was also maybe a little bit entertaining and lighthearted. So as the students maybe were working on this, they might get a chuckle or something along the way that ethics certainly is serious. But that doesn't mean as we talk about these issues, we can't have a good time and, and be thoughtful and, 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 um, and be maybe even entertained a little bit. I'm looking forward to seeing how the, uh, students come forward with, uh, in response to the case study this year. Well, Rory, thank you. Thank you very much for, for writing the case. Thank you very much for participating in this, uh, in this podcast. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks, Jira, for hosting this. It's uh, I'm looking forward to it, too. Uh, anyone who is interested in the Ethics Challenge, the Ethics Challenge will take place May 25th, Thursday, May 25th, starting at, uh, at 3 p.m. Um, we will uh, have four different teams uh, compete and present their uh, present their findings. And then afterwards, there's a little a uh, little bit of networking going on. Um, but uh, this will also be uh, be broadcast via uh, via Zoom, so you don't all have to come into uh, into the heart of uh, into the heart of Seattle, uh, and uh, to 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 enjoy uh, to enjoy the uh, well, <clears throat> I was about to say to enjoy the the the, the play. There will be no uh, thespians, only hardworking uh, hardworking students. And but I do think actually that everyone will have uh, have a good time. I hope that everyone will have a good time, and I'm I'm looking forward to it uh, to it as well. Thank you very much for uh, for uh, for listening, and I hope to see you on uh, on the twenty fifth, either via Zoom or maybe in person. <laughs>